Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Kendra and today I'm featuring the October of 2023 Crafty Courtyard Kit by Pink and Main called Deco Florals and I'm sharing the entire card making process for 15 cards that I created using this kit and my latest quarterly card making challenge, Kendra's Card Challenge number 12. I recently shared an unboxing video that shows all of the contents of this kit. So if you missed that video, I will link that in the description box below. But here's a brief look at what all is included. The Crafty Courtyard kits are one of the monthly subscription products available from Pink and Main. The base price is only $34.99 plus shipping, which is based on your location. And they usually ship around the 15th of the month. You can still purchase the kits through the end of the month unless it sells out. But what's great about being a subscriber to any of the monthly subscription products is that you receive 15% off all products in the store anytime you shop as long as you're an active subscriber. So it's definitely worth it to sign up. If you'd like to subscribe, I'll have a link down in the description box. This is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. And this helps to support my channel. As mentioned before, I'm using my latest quarterly card challenge number 12 to make these cards. The PDF printable includes cutting guides for six sheets of pattern paper and 15 card sketches with instructions. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card making challenges, I will link a video below in the description box so you can get all of the details. But I'll talk more about the challenge as we go throughout this video. Before we get started, I hope you'll take a moment to click on that subscribe button down below if you're not already a subscriber. I've selected six coordinating pattern papers from the Fun Pastels paper pad that came in the kit for each of these color-coded cutting guides A through F on the printable. I also selected six additional patterns that I'll be using for some of the layers on my cards. Now, This video is going to be a little bit longer than some of my other videos in the past because I'm showing the entire process of making the cards, including the cutting that you see me doing here. Now, I have sped this up four times, but I will share some important tips about cutting the papers as we're going through these. In my challenge introduction video, I show and explain this whole cutting process in detail, much slower. So please check that out if you're new to my challenges and want to go through the cutting process with me. You'll want to have something to keep each of the pieces in to help, help you stay organized. I like to use cellophane bags that are numbered 1 through 15, but you can use whatever method works for you. But I highly recommend sorting these pieces out as you cut them so you don't get them confused. Now, right now I'm cutting paper B. You'll want to look on the printable for the scissors as this shows which cut you'll want to make first. This one has some circle shapes cut out of it. So if you don't have circle punches or nested circle dies, you can use something round to trace and cut the circles out by hand. But you'll want to use several different sizes of circles between one and three quarters of an inch and two and a half inches. There are two squares that you'll be cutting circles out of. I mentioned in my introduction video that nesting dies would probably be easier, but because my die cutting machine is on another table, I figured I'd show me using the circle punches again. But I cut the two and a half inch circle first from that two and a half inch square. Then I cut the circle in half using my paper trimmer and I used the line on the checkered pattern to line up my cut. And then I took the one and three quarter inch circle punch and cut the smaller circle out of that one. You'll see me cutting the remaining circles for card sketch number three here shortly. Now I had someone ask me, why not keep the two and a half inch circle pieces together and cut the one and three quarter inch circle from the top piece? Now you can certainly do this if your pattern doesn't have variations of color like this one or if it has different images on it. But because of the card sketch three having the illusion of it being a continuous swirl, this was how I made it on the cutting guide. I also cut out the banner pieces using the top part of this punch. Now you can do this with scissors and I'll show you how to do this here in a moment. But here is paper C or the third sheet of paper and the rest of these are pretty straightforward. So while I cut the remaining pieces, I'll tell you a little bit more about the challenge. To enter the challenge, you'll need to join the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group and answer the membership questions to get approval to be a member. Once approved, you will need to upload one photo of your entire set of cards to the official entry photo album for the month you are submitting it for. Your photo must include the set of all cards. Pictures of single cards or pictures not containing all 15 cards will not count as an entry. Additional entries in the same album will not be counted for prizes. You can enter up to three times per quarter with different sets as long as they're posted in the different monthly albums. It will need to be a different set 
of cards for each entry, not the same photo posted three times. You must include your name and country of residence in your photo caption. After uploading your photo, please double check in the album to make sure it posted correctly and that the information I need for prize drawings is there. Posting photos on the group wall or photos uploaded to the comments section of an album does not count as an entry. It must be posted in the official entry photo albums. The photo albums can be found under media at the top of the group when you're on a computer. You just have to scroll to the right. If you're on a mobile device, the location of the albums is different depending on the type of phone that you have and the version of the Facebook app that you have downloaded. It will either be under media, same as a computer, or you can find them by clicking on the three horizontal lines in the top left corner. Also, please check the featured posts at the top of the Facebook group, as this is where I post important information, including the current challenge and other updates throughout the quarter. I update the link each month throughout the challenge to the current official entry photo album in this challenge introduction post. By clicking on these links, it will take you directly to the current official entry photo album. You can post photos in the individual sketch photo album so that we can see the cards up close. Each month, I will use the photos in the sketch albums for the sketch winners. The first month in each quarter, I will reveal the sketch winners for sketches one through five a week or so after the month ends. And then sketches six through 10 will be announced the following month. And the remaining sketches will be announced after the last month in the quarter. If you're not on Facebook, you can upload your photo of all 15 cards to the form linked on my website. But please note that the form entries that are uploaded here will not be included in the video showcases each month. Typically, when I sit down to make my cards using my challenges, I'll cut all of my layers and then decide how I want to decorate the cards off camera before I start putting them together. And because of the magic of editing, I'm skipping ahead to show how I do the stamping and die cutting in bulk so that I have lots of options to choose from when deciding what to use. Here I've selected a bunch of different ink colors from my stash that I think will match the colors in the paper pad the best. I usually don't use Distress Oxides to stamp with, but these colors were the closest, and they are Kitsch Flamingo, Dusty Concord, Shaded Lilac, and Tumbled Glass. I also used Catherine Pooler ink in Lime Ricky. The yellow ink pad is from Simon Says Stamp called Sunbeam, and the dark pink color from Pink and Main is called Dress Shop. And I've placed all of the image stamps onto my Misty platform, along with a half sheet of white cardstock to stamp my images. And I'll be doing this several times with different colors, but I started with the Lime Ricky for my leaves and then the Dress Shop Pink for the flowers. And since my stamps are new and not conditioned yet, I'm stamping these a few times to get a good impression. And then I repeat this process several times using different colors. That way I can create a bunch to select from and have some extra to have on hand when I need to make a quick card. After stamping the flowers, I used my Misty Alignment Grids to place the sentiment stamps down onto my Misty platform. This is so helpful to keep these stamps straight. You just place the stamps on top of the grid and then lift the stamps up with the door of the Misty and remove the grid, and then they're stamped in perfect rows. So I did the same thing. I stamped these in several different colors. And then next I placed coordinating dies onto one of the sheets of the stamped images and I taped them down using some low tack tape to run them through my die cutting machine. And I'm being careful to just pop these cut images out and keep my dies in place so that I can use this as a template to cut the remaining sheets of stamped images. And once they're all popped out, you can line up the next sheet behind it and push the tape down to hold it in place and run it through the die cutting machine again. This is such a huge time saver and an easy way to get a bunch of images in a short amount of time. Afterwards, I sorted all of the images by color so that I could easily be able to select what images I wanted to use on each of the cards. Now, I did do this part off camera because otherwise this video would be well over an hour, but now I'll jump back to the part of cutting the layers for each of the sketches. These are the pieces for card sketch number one, and I'm just laying out the pieces and testing out both sides to see which combination I like better. And I'm taking another sheet of pattern paper to use for the layer on this card. I originally thought I'd use the side with the small grid pattern, but I decided to flip it over and use the bokeh pattern sides. Since I used the back side of the paper, the design is flipped to the other side, which is totally okay to do since the sketches are just meant to be a starting point to get you going. You don't have to follow them exactly. 
I cut the layer to four by five and a quarter inches and saved the scraps. You'll see me use some of these scraps on other cards later. And then next I pulled in the colored cardstock from the kit to decide which color to use for my card base and for the other layers. I went with the salon pink color and I cut the card base to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I used the other side to cut out my smaller rectangle layer and to cut the pink circle for the circle layer. But instead of showing you the process of cutting my layers for each of the cards and then showing the process of me putting together each of the cards later, I'm editing this to show the whole process for each card. So here you'll see now I have a smaller circle cut out of white cardstock and the sentiment, just a note, has already been stamped on the bottom and I'm just now putting it together. I'm using one of my new favorite tools, the Precision Glue Press by My Sweet Petunia. I have carpal tunnel syndrome and this is wonderful because I can just pull the trigger to get a small amount of glue to come out rather than squeezing the bottle. It sits in a holder that caps off the tip to keep it from drying out and it stays upside down so that the glue is ready to come out when you need it. It comes with an empty glue bottle so that you can put whatever type of liquid glue that you like best in it. I found by using this the card making process goes by much faster because I'm not having to mess with a glue bottle. And here is card sketch number one. For card two, this has two squares, and the piece with that half circle cut out of it is tucked behind the whole square, so no one will ever know. Again, I used another sheet of pattern paper to use for the layer, and I cut it to four by five and a quarter. And for this one, I went with the purple card stock for my card base and my layers. And then for the focal point, off camera, I used the Hello Word and Shadow Die that came as part of the coordinating die set in this kit to cut out hello out of some holographic paper, which I'll show you here in just a bit. And I used the teal Riverwalk cardstock for the shadow part of the word die cut. And that'll be used for my focal point. And then I also used one of the sentiments, I hope this cheers you. And I used a banner die cut to cut that out. And I'll just place that below it. Now here you see me using some scraps to put behind these uh, squares just to keep it level. What I love about the pink and main papers are that they are heavy duty and they're thick. So you really don't have to do this um, unless you have thin paper. I'm just doing it just in case when I mail it, I don't want the indentions to show through, but it's definitely not necessary. Um, and then to finish off this card, I am adding a glitter enamel dot onto that banner. And this is card number two. Now for card number three, this one seems to be the most challenging card out of the whole set. So I'll slow this down some and explain in detail what I'm doing. So I already have the half circles from the pattern paper that I cut out earlier, and I'm using another sheet of pattern paper for my layer. I'm cutting this to three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. And I'm gonna use the two and a half inch strip that I cut off for another circle here in just a second. I'm saving all these scraps to use as I go through putting all of my layers together for the other cards. Now the card sketch shows that there are four other circles in different sizes. The black one on the sketch measures two and a quarter inches on the top side and two inches on the bottom. The light gray measures two inches on the top and two and a quarter inches on the bottom. And then the darker gray measures one and three quarter inches on the top and two and a half inches on the bottom. And then of course that top layer circle is one and three quarter inches. Of course, you can change this up if you don't have these exact sizes, work with what you have. If you don't have any circle dies or punches at all, and you don't want to trace around round objects and cut it out by hand, you can just eliminate cutting out the circles out of that square when you cut out paper B and just use that square similar to the way it's used on sketch number four. But here I'm cutting out two circles from each color in the sizes that I need for each of the layered circles. So I'm using this evening clouds and I've cut out the two and two and a quarter inches. And then I'm also taking the salon pink and I'm doing the same exact thing, cutting out a two inch circle and a two and a quarter inch circle. And then for the big layer that's gonna go behind that focal circle I cut out the two and a half inch circle from that scrap. 
Then I cut it in half using my paper trimmer and took one of the halves and cut a smaller one and three quarter inch circle out of it using my punch. Next, I cut all of my other circles in half. I'll save the extras for another card later. I really love the swirl look of this card. So I know I'll be making more cards like this and I know that these half circles won't go to waste. Once you have all of your half circles, you'll want to line them up according to the sketch. Now I haven't cut my layer or my middle strip yet, so I'm going to be using the moss green cardstock for this. I used uh, a white card base and I'm cutting out a three and three quarter inch by five inch layer. Now earlier I mentioned this holographic paper that I used for the Hello Sentiment on card two. This is from the holographic set number two from Pink and Main. There are different holographic patterns and I remembered that there was one that kind of looked like a watercolor pattern. So that's what I picked out for that small strip to go in the middle on top of that green strip. Now you'll see me use the rest of this holographic sheet later. Now to glue all of this together. Now I've noticed that there was a crushed corner on my white card base. So I quickly called it, created another card base, and then I glued my two layers down. I placed all of the pieces down first just to make sure that I liked how they looked. And then I glued each of the half circles together, lining them all up in one corner. Now here's a tip. You'll want to add a few more layers of the middle strip piece if you'd like to keep everything the same level. I forgot to do that before adding glue to the back of my strip, but luckily I caught it before it dried, so I was able to add a scrap strip to the back to raise it up some. So you'll glue the stack of half circles on each side of this strip, making sure to line up the colors. For that top circle that I'm using for the focal point, it's one and three quarter inches. I cut out that circle from another scrap strip that I used for another card. And since there's so many layers of circles, I decided to put some foam tape on the bottom half of this circle to make it level. And I'm using the foam tape roll from Pink and Main. This huge roll comes with 108 feet of foam tape, so it'll definitely last you a while. And it's only $20, but if you subscribe to the kits, it's actually 15% off of that, so it's definitely a good investment. And this is card number three. For the remaining cards, most of them are self-explanatory, but please feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comments section below. I read every single comment and I welcome any feedback. Please let me know if you like seeing this entire process or if you'd rather just see a shortened version of me putting the cards together like I've done in the past but let me know in the comments. Rather than talking, I'll put notes up on the screen and I'm gonna put on some music and come back once I'm done with all 15 cards.
was all 15 cards. I really hope you've enjoyed the process. Here's a look at all of the stamped images and sentiments and papers that I have left over. I definitely have enough to make more cards. In addition to the contents of the kit, I also used two additional sheets of white cardstock, a sheet of dress shop or hot pink cardstock, and a sheet of that purple evening clouds cardstock. And then of course that holographic cardstock. But everything else was from the kit, with the exception of the grass and banner dies. And of course the scoring board, punches, paper trimmer, die cutting machine, and glue or adhesive. But overall this took me about six hours to complete. So I'm kind of excited that I edited this to be under one hour. I really hope you'll join in on Kendra's card challenge number 12. You can have a chance to win prizes for entering the challenge, including a $25 prize pack from Pink and Main each month and a $25 gift certificate. Pink and Main is one of our awesome prize super sponsors, and I'm so thankful for their generosity and support. Now, this particular challenge ends on December 31st of 2023, so there's plenty of time to enter. I'll also put a link where you can download the PDF printable below. This printable is free to download to all subscribers during the quarter. If you're watching this video after December 31st, you can still access this printable. I'll have all of the details on my website, kendrascardchallenges.com. Remember, you can continue ordering this kit from Pink and Main through the end of the month until they sell out. Again, I'll have the link to sign up for the subscription in the description box below. I really hope you like my card ideas, and I hope it inspires you to get creative. You'll have to let me know which one of these cards is uh, your favorite. Let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.